National Registry of Space Objects. Ano? Uh, in accordance with the United Nations Convention on the Registration of Objects Launched into Outer Space, the Philippine Space Agency shall maintain a National Registry of Space Objects which lists all space objects launched under the responsibility of the Philippines as the launching state. So the PILSA shall furnish the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs with information contained in the National Registry of Space Objects as required under the Registration Convention. In this particular aspect, we may need to uh, 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 have, get some assistance from uh, other countries that uh, have been long into this kind of registry. Uh, the other one is the liability related to that of the Philippine, Philippines for national space objects. So in accordance again with the United Nations Convention on International Liability for damage caused by space objects and other similar international laws, the Philippine government shall take responsibility for damages caused by space objects registered in the Philippine National Registry of Space Objects. So, kung meron bumagsak na satellite at bumagsak sa Cambodia, babayaran natin yun. Uh, this shall take into effect upon ratification of the Liability Convention and Registration Convention by the Philippine government. The other important uh, uh, provision, which I did not uh, dwell in detail, is the Philippine Space Development Fund. Uh, the law creates a uh, Philippine Space Development Fund to be used exclusively for the PILSA. Uh, this will be administered by the Director General of PILSA and uh, it will consist of the following. Uh, the amount of 10 billion to be taken from the share of the national government in the gross income of PAGCOR and BCDA for the next five years. And uh, an amount of 2 billion per year shall be released to the PILSA. So for five years, uh, 2 billion uh, per year, that will be 10 billion, including any interest thereon. The other source would be income from specialized products, services, and royalties produced by the PILSA. And there is also the provision that uh, loans and contributions or grants, requests, gifts, and donations, whether from local or foreign sources, that is specifically for space uh, ages, uh, space uh, uh, activities, will be a part of the uh, space development fund. Uh, meron the provision that uh, yung budget uh, uh, initial uh, appropriation that will be given from the initial, from the current fiscal year's appropriation of the Office of the President. So, if you say current fiscal year, it's 2019. Uh, the Office of the President uh, uh, shall uh, 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 appropriate 1 billion, 1 billion uh, as the initial operating fund of PILSA. Uh, it did not say here whether it can be it should be spent for just 2019 or it can be spent uh, uh, for more <laughs> 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 1 billion for the next 4 months. Uh, <laughs> there is also a provision that uh, if it earns income from any of its activities, 75% shall be retained for the upgrading of equipment and physical facilities and the remaining 25% shall be remitted to the national treasury. So it has many special provisions that uh, other agencies do not enjoy. Third question. Sir, Sir Boy, here, here. Melvin Melvin from News Mike. Sir, uh, what's your thoughts on uh, the space agency being uh, aligned under the Office of the President rather than the BOSD as uh, ori you originally uh, envisioned? Uh, we, well, we were the initiators of the, of the, of the legislation, but uh, it is uh, out from the discussions uh, at the Senate, at the Congress, it was obvious that uh, uh, other agencies have a stake, okay? whether in terms of uh, provisions or whether in terms of uh, uh, utilization and I think uh, uh, it is best on our part to uh, help them uh, in the in the uh, whole uh, structure and uh, uh, shall we say operations of the space agency. So uh, we did not have uh, a difficult time convincing ourselves that it is okay. So maybe a cabinet level position, yung director general. Yes. So and how is the coordination between DOST and the uh, PSA? PSA. Yeah, PSA. 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 PSA
pag humingi sila ng grant sa amin, hindi meron kami relasyon sa kanila. Ang <laughs> <laughs> vice chair kami ng council. So, the secretary is the vice chair. Oh, 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 oh. So, I don't know how much time the president and the executive Senate secretary has for this. Depending on their uh, uh, availability or non-availability, we may have more work. Sir, apparently for the actual facility that's 2022, sir, hopefully, na meron na, but while wala po tayo nun, saan po muna mananatili itong space agency natin? Yun yung siguro pag-uusapan sa IRR formulation within the next 60 days. Of course, sa akin, sa tingin ko, very natural na i-house muna sa DOSP agencies kasi nasa amin yung mga R&D na ginawa. Good afternoon. Sir, uh, ano po pagiging yung role ng DOSD? Although parang yun ang tanong ni, ano, ni, ni Melvin. Pero doon po sa process, bago ma-approve po ito, ano, uh, ano po ang pinakamahirap na bahagi doon po sa approval nito po ng uh, peer na ito? E yung uh, pag, pagpapanusot doon sa mga financial conditions. Kasi as always, yung, uh, yung uh, appropriations committee ang uh, talagang nagdadaanan. Kasi kahit anong patas, basta mayroong financial implications, yun ang pinakamahirap daanan. Uh, pangalawa siguro, eh, hindi naman ganun kahirap, pero magkaiba po ng posisyon ang House at Senate when it comes to where the agency will be under. So sa sa House, they, they wanted it under the OST. At sa Senate, they wanted it under, under the Office of the President. So, nung magkaroon na ng uh, bicameral committee, when uh, it was passed in the House and it was passed in the uh, Senate, doon lang sila may pagkakaiba kung saan iaan there. So, uh, tinanong kami, eh, sabi namin, if the only way is for you to, to agree that it will be under the Office of the President since uh, uh, alam niyo pag hindi pa na within that limited time period, we will go back to square one. And uh, hindi naman kami selfish to not to allow that. Uh, yes, sir, um, kasi kasama po ang security natin. So, uh, merong um, personnel from DND. Um, alam na ho ba ninyo kung sino po ang lalagay doon sa DND? At kasi... DND. Uh, Except sino rin sa anak. Ah, uh, okay. Um, sa agriculture po, meron ba? Or wala. Eh, kasi sila yung mga department dyan eh. Di siyempre nakakaalam dyan yung mga sekretary nila. Sino yung i-designate. O kaya naman sa IRR, pwede i-designate sabihin yung uh, inyong undersecretaries for blah 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 uh, will will be the one to constitute the IRR committee. Pwede okay. ito. Alright. Sir, follow um Maka-under ba dito ang diwata? Ano ibig sabihin mga under under ng uh, Philippines ano uh, space agency ang um, diwata? Uh, Kapag mga under pa yung mga diwata at the time of uh, the appointment of the structure, oh, uh, supervise na nila yung uh, diwata. Kung wala na, kung gumagsak na yung diwata, wala na. Pero kung may bago, hindi pa buhay pa nga. Ah, okay. eh. <laughs> <laughs> Pero sir, meron pa tayo? Na exit yung life expectancy. Uh, ah. May data ba tayo ng diwata? Data ano? Ano po yung mga nakuha ng diwata? Ah, oo, oo, oo. Nandiyan sa Pedro. You can ah, spend uh, days uh, looking at the uh, wealth of data of images that have been received and processed and transmitted to agencies. Si Mark lang. Mas authoritative. Ako eh, ano lang niya ako dyan. Nag-post lang ako dyan. Uh, salamat po sa tanong. Uh, yung tanong po about the Diwata data, is it available? Uh, yan, kung nasan po sila. It's actually available po sa, uh, sa public natin. It's actually on the website that anybody can log into. And kailangan nila po ng username and password. Of course, it's for uh, it's for academic and commercial use. It's available for everybody. So, siguro it's an opportunity then for me to uh, call yung ating mga researchers that the, uh, the Diwata data sets are available. It's, um, it's free of charge. Anybody you can uh, utilize the data um, and we don't uh, the, the project team, we don't really claim na kami lang yung marunong gumamit ng satellite imagery kasi as you have, uh, you have heard 
um, yung ating satellite imagery it has been used by different agencies, different researchers for a long, long, long time. It's actually a misnomer na sabi natin na ngayon lang yung uh, space age ng, ng Philippines because we've been a user of uh, downstream technology and satellites for a very long time and communications as well. So parang uh, the fields are now would be would bridge the gap actually from the upstream and the downstream technologies. For example, the, the satellites that we're building, the ground receiving stations that we're building. So we can bridge natin yung gap uh, between those. And dahil doon, mas napapabilis natin yung delivery ng um, yung satellite images. So yun po, um, the website the website is um, www. Yung <laughs> sorry. I-google nyo lang po, PHL Microsat. So, www.phl-microsat.upd.edu.ph Meron din siya Facebook page. Ah, po? PHL Microsat Facebook page, di ba? Ah, meron din pong Facebook page. Yun. PHL Microsat. Uh, I-google nyo lang po yan. Dagalit ko sa Facebook page, sa blog, sa actual website. Uh, I'll let Alvin Retamar add to that Okay. Uh, top of uh, the WADA data, which uh, we've been receiving for since the lifetime of uh, microsatellites, uh, we also augment uh, our data requirements uh, through uh, other satellite uh, resources. So we also receive these uh, satellite images and data uh, at Pedro, and they're also available to a portal. And uh, we've been serving uh, various uh, needs of uh, government agencies. As mentioned, uh, we serve the needs of EVM for time monitoring. Uh, big ticket projects of the government. Uh, we've been serving the needs of Navalia to augment their data requirements for uh, mapping and uh, NDRMC for disaster related activities and many other uh, agencies. Sir, powerful na question. Sir, uh, sir boy, uh, may kukun yung bang agency from the DOSD or PILSA? May kukun yung bang agencies? May ano? Agency, sir. Saan? Sa, fr from DOST to FINSA. Kanyan, for example, wala, ASCII wala, or PISHAR? Wala, wala namang sinabi. Oh, sir, okay. If, sinabi. if not, yung ano ba sir, yung PISHAR and uh, ASCII will be precluded from being, from yung doing space research or projects? Hindi. As we, as we do it in the other sectors, PISHAR is not precluded to do research for uh, DPWH, for DOA, and ASCII is doing research for uh, uh, BBM or for uh, I mean, our role as uh, giving direction and funds for research will continue. Kaya lang ko ayon na namin ngayon ng Thank you, sir. Last question for one. Nora, last question for Nora. Haba yan. Sir, I'm just wondering, kasi yung space community unang-una, ng Taiti, ay hindi naman talaga malapat, <laughs> no? Ay, ay, maki sila ay pwede sabihin hindi sila malapat at maaari din sabihin sila ay makitid. Iniisip ko lang po, ano po ba ang nakikita nating comparative advantage or competitive advantage or maybe you may want to use another term na pwede nating i-contribute sa global community. Kasi hindi mahaba yun. Uh, ang pwede natin i-contribute. Yes. Aside from, of course, uh, disaster management, resiliency, oh. initiatives na noon po ay narinig na namin sa inyo. <laughs> Siguro na nabanggit ko na rin, uh, Nora, no, na yes, ang bansa natin ay testbed for environmental measurements and we can contribute a lot of data to the collective understanding and promotion of knowledge base ng buong mundo uh, by contributing our assets and space. So that's one thing we can contribute, either to the scientific community or to the uh, various government uh, uh, agencies and country-to-country -country relationships. We can share data and information. That's one way that we can contribute to this uh, space ecosystem. And economy.
Okay, the way, ano ko lang, puro, puro ko lang since uh, uh, we will be accumulating a lot of information and data kasi araw-araw umiikot siya, ano? Ang daming nakikita ang images, mayroong mapatapat siya sa, sa forest, mapatapat siya sa dagat, mapatapat siya sa mga agricultural areas, sa mga settlements. So, all of these data are actually uh, received and uh, Uh, a certain extent processed and then uh, distributed or uh, stored. Now, uh, if you will recall, we are now, uh, we have entered the age of uh, artificial intelligence. We have so much uh, uh, data information. We can use data science, data analytics. I think uh, if our data scientists will work on the data that we are able to collect and information, there will be new knowledge that can be generated. There will be models that can be presented and uh, that can be a contribution of our country to be body of knowledge globally. So, sir, ang sinasabi po ba ninyo ay the niche that we are particularly exploring sa ating mga space assets ay uh, uh, environmental management at saka yung sinasabi nyo na in the past na yung know, disaster management. The enumeration of the agencies okay. listed here uh, points to the kind of uh, data that can be received and processed and transmitted and used. Okay? So, una-una na dito ang DA ang uh, DENR, ang BTI, to a certain extent, uh, ito yung sa more on the industry na ito, yung industry side naman, ano? And then DICT. And uh, of course, even NEDA, since NEDA is the, ano ba tawag dito? Caretaker of the National Land Use uh, uh, Plan also. Sila yung uh, responsible uh, for that. So all of these can be inputs. And of course, the Department of National Defense, kasi nga, napaka-importante. Sabi ko nga noon eh, kung siguro kung meron na tayong programa ganito ng araw, hindi na tayo nagoyo. Ano? Uh, and in other words, if we have uh, uh, more information at our disposal. You know? So, uh, importante, importante yung security. Uh, last na po talaga. Last na Maybe sir, for Filipinos to visualize yung agency. Kasi ang perception siguro nung the general public ay, you know, going to the moon, going to Mars, yung mga ganon. But for the Philippines, we've talked about data, yung mga cube satellites. In the next five years, ano yung sa tingin nyo, at least yung mga experts here, yung trajectory, what are we gonna be developing? Like, concrete, uh, are we gonna see different kinds of satellites? And I'm curious lang because in space development in the U.S., they develop yung parang as through the course of developing space grade, ano nga, they've been able to make technology that are used in, you know, everyday life. Is that something that we're looking at as well? Ay, siguro yung pag, uh, pag trace natin sa improvements, ano, di ba, Mark? From Diwata 1 to Diwata 2, and so on. Makikita na natin yung mga uh, incremental improvements sa technology. And uh, when we design the, the next uh, Uh, microsatellite. I'm sure that there will be new new features that will be uh, incorporated. Uh, no araw kasi, hindi na, ako hindi ko na-imagine kung pwede ko na magkaroon ng satellite na isang dang kalangan laki. Ano? Pero ngayon, nangyayari na siya. So, there are other possibilities pa. So, siguro ito mga expert ang pwede mong mag-forecast. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so fast it the most uh, see, uh, I think to answer the question, um, actually, global trend is miniaturization. So if you look at, um, in fact, uh, if you look at our neighbors, we're trying to do space activities. Satellites are becoming, are becoming smaller and smaller, uh, but they're able to do many things as well. And the good thing with miniaturization is hindi yung capacity ng isa, kundi you could actually make multiple copies of it. And to, yung collective capability nila, yun yung nagpapaganda sa kanya. Okay, so sabi ni Secretary Boy is yung isang dangkal. Actually, meron pang kalahating dangkal, no? So I've seen yung ano, kalahating dangkal pa na sa atin. Right? So could you imagine uh, yung swarm of those very small satellites, each with a camera, moving around the Earth. So, we can, how much area can you cover? So, it's like, uh lang kaliit yung bata natin and then swarm it all over the Philippines. Gano'ng karami yung makikita natin. So, you can imagine that. So, that's a that's one particular uh, trend na nakikita natin on uh, space activities. Uh, 
uh, final word from our we would like to thank all of you for coming over at a very short notice. I just would like to emphasize the following. Uh, uh, in this particular instance, I really would like to extend sincere thanks and admiration to our legislators and, uh, of course, the Office of the President. Because uh, uh, if I may share with you, during uh, uh, just a span of uh, about a year, from 2018 to 2019, there were four uh, pieces of legislation that were passed uh, for the science and technology sector. So last year, in June last year, they passed uh, the, the Congress and then the President approved the Badik Scientist uh, uh, Act, uh, which is now enabling us to attract more because of the added uh, incentives and the reduced bureaucratic, bureaucratic procedures. Uh, secondly, uh, earlier this year, the amended Magna Carta for science workers was also approved, which basically uh, uh, is more inclusive in the sense that uh, different agencies can declare their own list of uh, who are the science workers in their respective agencies for as long as they follow the same criteria as the DOST. Uh, whereas before they have to go to the OST to approve who will be the scientists, <laughs> who will be called science or science workers in their agencies. And it also allows us to uh, actually, in certain cases, extend the services of scientists you know, beyond uh, 65. Uh, there is also, uh, of course, the uh, Innovation Startup Act, uh, which was also passed uh, at the conclusion of the 17th Congress. And uh, while we were not the original initiators of the yeah, Innovation Startup Act, it was really an uh, idea like in Senator Obama, you know, we supported it fully because we think that uh, we need it okay, at this particular stage of development where we have uh, many bright people, particularly the younger ones, who want to put up their own technology-based uh, businesses. And uh, therefore, the uh, uh, particular uh, uh, inclusion of UST, DTI, and DICT in that act as the main, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, implementers of the Innovation Startup Act is uh, uh, very well appreciated. And finally, uh, at the last moment, uh, we were we were afraid that uh, it will just lapse into law, which is, uh, of course, still make it a law. But to me, it is very important that the president sign uh, the bill, uh, bill sub bill into law. And uh, we are really appreciative of, uh, uh, shall we say, the action and the collaboration between the legislative and the uh, executive in this aspect. Of course, uh, uh, the remaining work is with the agencies that are tasked to do the work, but uh, uh, it gives me more optimism about the path we will take. And uh, if you add uh, uh, the last uh, uh, media conference we had was to report to you uh, the uh, uh, jumping of the Philippines from uh, rank 73 to rank 54 in the Global Innovation Index. It inspires us more and uh, we will do our best so that uh, we can uh, still jump uh, higher in the innovation uh, rankings. Uh, to us, uh, it will bring the Philippines uh, closer to the uh, goals of development that we have been aspiring for. Every Filipino should aspire for this. We love our country. Nobody else will love our country except us. Thank you.